my dear students welcome back to our channel students in this video i am explaining mba first semester subject statistics for management important short questions and answers let's start quick revision first unit first important short question is define skewness skewness is a measure of how data is spread out it tells us if the data is tilted to one side positive skew most values are small but there are a few very large ones that pull the average to the right like most students scoring low marks but a few scoring very high negative skew most values are large but a few very small ones pull the average to the left like most people having high salaries but a few having very low ones skewness helps us understand whether data is balanced or tilted in one direction next important short question is define kurtosis kurtosis is a measure that tells us how much the data's distribution is peaked or flat compared to a normal distribution high kurtosis the data has sharp tall peaks with more outliers example most people have average incomes but a few have extremely high or low incomes low kurtosis the data is more evenly spread out with fewer extreme values example test scores that are mostly average with few very high or low scores kurtosis helps us understand whether data has more outliers or is more consistent around the average next important short question is what is conditional probability conditional probability is the chance of an event happening knowing that another event has already occurred for example if you have a bag with three red balls and two blue balls the probability of picking a red ball is 3/5 but if you know that you already picked a red ball the probability of picking another red ball from the remaining balls is now 2/4 in simple terms conditional probability helps us find the likelihood of something happening based on the condition that something else has already happened next important short question is applications of bayes theorem bayes theorem is used to update the probability of an event based on new information applications one medical diagnosis if a patient tests positive for a disease bayes theorem helps calculate the true probability they have the disease considering test accuracy two spam filtering it updates the likelihood of an email being spam by analyzing keywords three weather forecasting it helps predict weather conditions by updating probabilities based on new data in simple terms bayes theorem helps us refine our predictions by adjusting them with new relevant information next second unit second unit first important question is probability distribution a probability distribution shows the likelihood of all possible outcomes of a random event for example when flipping a fair coin there are two outcomes heads or tails the probability distribution is heads 0.5 tails 0.5 there are two types one discrete distribution for countable outcomes example rolling a die two continuous distribution for outcomes that can take any value in a range example measuring temperature in simple terms a probability distribution helps us understand the chances of different outcomes in an event next important short question is binomial distribution a binomial distribution is used when there are two possible outcomes like success or failure 
and you repeat an experiment a certain number of times. For example, if you flip a coin four times, the binomial distribution can tell you the probability of getting exactly two heads. Each flip has two outcomes, heads or tails, and the experiment is repeated a set number of times. In simple terms, binomial distribution helps us calculate the chances of getting a specific number of successes, like heads, in a fixed number of trials, like con flips. Next important short question is Poisson distribution. A Poisson distribution is used to model the number of events happening in a fixed time or space when these events occur randomly and independently. For example, if five customers arrive at a store every hour on average, the Poisson distribution helps calculate the probability of exactly seven customers arriving in the next hour. In simple terms, Poisson distribution helps us understand the likelihood of a specific number of random events, like arrivals or accidents, happening within a certain period or area. Next important short question is, what are the properties of normal distribution? The normal distribution has several important properties. 1. Symmetry the curve is perfectly symmetrical around the mean. 2. Bell-shaped, most data points are near the mean, with fewer data points. As you move further away. 3. Mean is equal to median is equal to mode, these three values are equal in a normal. Distribution. 4. 68-95-99.7 rule. About 68% of data falls within one standard deviation. From the mean, 95% within 2 and 99.7% within 3. For example, in a class test, most students will score close to the average with fewer scoring very high or low. Next, third unit. Third unit. First important short question is, what are benefits of sampling? Sampling offers several benefits. 1. Cost effective. It saves money by studying a small group instead of the entire population. For example, a survey of 100 people costs less than surveying 1000. 2. Time saving. Gathering data from a sample is faster than collecting it from everyone. 3. Practical, it's often impossible to study the whole population, like testing. Every item in a large factory. 4. Accuracy, a well-chosen sample can give results that represent the entire population. In simple terms, sampling helps researchers save time and resources while still obtaining useful insights. Next important short question is. Standard deviation versus standard error. Standard deviation shows how spread out the individual data points are in a set. For example, in a class test, if most students score similarly, the standard deviation is small, but if scores vary a lot, it's larger. Standard error measures how much the sample mean is likely to differ from. The true population mean. It's calculated by dividing the standard deviation by the square root of the sample size. In simple terms, standard deviation tells us about data spread, while standard error tells us how accurately a sample mean represents the population mean. Next important short question is Explain errors in hypothesis testing. In hypothesis testing, there are two types of errors. One, type I error. This occurs when you mistakenly reject a true null. Hypothesis, a false positive. For example, concluding a medicine works when it actually doesn't. Two, type two error. This happens when you fail to reject a false null. Hypothesis, a false negative. 
for example, concluding a medicine doesn't work when it actually does. In simple terms, type I error is saying something is true when it's not and type. To error is saying something is false when it's true. Both affect the accuracy of the test results. Next important short question is State the properties of a good estimator. A good estimator has these properties. 1. Unbiased. The estimator should give the correct value on average. 4. Example. The average height from a sample should equal the true average. Height of the population. 2. Consistent. As the sample size grows, the estimator should get closer to the true value. 3. Efficient. It should provide the most accurate estimate with the least. Variability. 4. Sufficient. It should use all the information from the data. In simple terms, a good estimator should give accurate, reliable, and precise results as the sample size increases. Next fourth unit. Fourth unit. First important short question is. What are the properties of t-distribution? The t-distribution has these key properties. 1. Symmetric. It's similar to the normal distribution with a balanced shape. Around the mean. 2. Heavier tails. It has thicker tails, meaning there's a higher chance of extreme values than the normal distribution. 3. Degrees of freedom. The shape depends on the sample size more. Degrees of freedom makes it look like a normal distribution. 4. Used for small samples. It's ideal for small sample sizes, usually n. 30. When the population standard deviation is unknown. For example, the t-distribution is used when estimating the average of a small group like 10 students. Next important short question is. Paired t-test. A paired t-test is used to compare to related groups or measurements to see if there's a significant difference between them. For example, you measure the test scores of a group of students before and after a study program. Since the scores are from the same students, it's a paired test. In simple terms, the paired t-test checks if the average difference between two Related measurements, like before and after, is statistically significant. It's useful when comparing results from the same group under different conditions. Next important short question is, what is ANOVA? ANOVA, analysis of variance, is a statistical test used to compare the means of three or more groups to see if there is a significant difference between them. For example, if you want to compare the test scores of students taught by three different methods, ANOVA helps you determine if the teaching method has a real impact on scores. In simple terms, ANOVA helps to find out if the average values in multiple groups are different from each other or if any observed differences are just due to random chance. Next important short question is Chi-square distribution. The Chi-square distribution is used to test how well observed data matches. Expected data, especially for categorical variables. For example, you roll a die 60 times and expect each number 1 to 6 to appear 10 times. The Chi-square test helps you compare the actual outcomes with the Expected ones to see if the differences are due to chance or something else. In simple terms, the chi-square distribution helps us check if there is a significant difference between what we expect to happen and what actually happens, especially in categorical data. Next fifth unit. Fifth unit. First important short question is. What is scatter diagram? A scatter diagram or scatter plot 
is a graph that shows how two variables are related by plotting data points on a two-dimensional axis. For example, if you want to see if there's a relationship between hours studied and exam scores, you would plot the hours on the x-axis and the scores on the y-axis. Each point represents one student's data. In simple terms, a scatter diagram helps us understand if there's a pattern or relationship between two things, such as more study time leading to higher exam scores. Next important short question is, explain the concept of partial correlation. Partial correlation measures the relationship between two variables while removing the effect of a third variable. It helps to understand the direct relationship between two variables without interference from others. For example, if you are studying the relationship between exercise and weight loss, but you know diet also plays a role, partial correlation helps you see the True connection between exercise and weight loss, excluding the effect of diet. In simple terms, partial correlation helps isolate the relationship between two things by controlling for the influence of other factors. Next important short question is Components in time series analysis Time series data has four main components. 1. Trend the long-term direction of the data, such as a steady increase in temperature over decades. 2. Seasonality, regular patterns that repeat at fixed intervals, like higher retail sales during the holiday season. 3. Cyclic, fluctuations that occur over irregular, long periods, like economic cycles of boom and recession. 4. Random, irregular, unpredictable variations, such as a sudden weather event affecting production. For example, in monthly sales data, the trend shows growth, seasonality reflects. Holiday surges, cyclic patterns represent economic changes and random events cause unexpected fluctuations. Next important short question is Moving averages. A moving average is a technique used to smooth out short-term fluctuations in data and highlight long-term trends. It calculates the average of data points over a specific period. For example, in tracking daily stock prices, a 5-day moving average would average the prices of the last 5 days. This helps smooth out daily price changes and reveals the overall trend more clearly. In simple terms, moving averages help you see patterns over time by averaging out the highs and lows in data, making trends easier to understand. It's like calculating a weekly average instead of daily values.